Hey there. I have a reoccurring guest here known as Julia Waller. She is a unique ability specialist and coach with Strategic Coach. And she is also a certified Clifton Strengths coach. Um, welcome. Thanks, Andre. It's great to be back. Yes, and you are a unique ability expert. Um, we talked about that a couple of times on the podcast. Now, what I wanted to you to discuss today is one of the tools you use is the Clifton Strengths. Last week, you heard Kathy Colby talking about the Colby Wisdom and the Colby A Index, which you also use, but you are an expert with the Clifton Strengths. And I figured it was better that you were here to explain it properly than me try to make it up as I go. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. Well, it's great because it works really well along with Colby because Colby really talks about how you take action when you're striving. Whereas Clifton Strengths adds in another piece of the puzzle that talks about what you're motivated to take action on. So what are the areas? And they give you these 34 awesome themes uh, that when you do the assessment, you come up with your list of your top five and they actually give you the whole list of 34 in rank order. So it gives you this incredible language of how to understand your uniqueness, your strengths, your talents that you know, we've talked about this with unique ability, we're so inside ourselves that we really are unaware of what we're actually doing all the time and how we mm -hmm. create value for the people around us, because we're just doing what's natural to us. So these are naturally occurring patterns of thought, feeling and behavior. That's really their Gallup's definition of a talent. So it's at the affective part of the mind, what we exactly. like to do, what we prefer to do and love to do. Yeah, exactly. It's the area you're motivated to. And it's more on the surface. Uh, you know, there's another assessment we use that goes much deeper, but it is what people can see and experience with you once they're, they're aware of it. Okay, so like, explain the themes a little more. There's 34 themes. What does it mean a theme? So a theme is sort of this constellation of talents and abilities and ways of behaving and, and doing things or thinking. And maybe, maybe it'd be good to give the context of the four domains. Can I go into that right now? No, yeah, talking? please. I think that Does would that make more sense. sense. Start Just there, to, yes. To yep. give the bigger picture framework. So they've taken these 34 themes. Well, actually, I'm going to go back one step. I'm going to go back one step to the inventor, Don, Don Clifton. So yep. he, was, uh, he was a researcher, an author, an American psychologist, uh, an entrepreneur, actually. And back in the day when he was around, um, the, uh, the abnormal psychology people were studying what was wrong with people, essentially. And he's like, well, wait a minute. Why don't we find out what's right with people? What if we actually studied that instead? You know, let's take all the insurance sales people out there and let's do a study and find out how the, that the top 10 got so successful. So he really wanted to study success. And what was at the heart of that? Right. That makes sense. And this is, we're not talking a few years ago. We're talking, was it the 30s, I mean, 40s? He was 1924 to 2003. Yeah. That's how his lifetime. So it was some, I don't know the specifics of when he came up with it, but it's been around for over 40 years. And I mean, mm -hmm. Gallup is a very, he, he, he created basically what was before Gallup. It was called selection research, which is now Gallup. So that's okay. his. That's so his it's name. nothing new. It's a lot of, based on a lot no. of research from all those decades. Yeah, very yeah. analytical, very research based, you know, tons of tons of research and analytics behind it. So it's a very reliable assessment to use too. And I mean, it can change because it's in the affective mode, um, 0.67 to 0.71 correlation if you redo it. So I usually advocate just do it once, stick with your first results because the order can change. It will probably stay in the same top 10. But the order can change a bit, which then people get all flustered because their number one went to number two or whatever. Mm -hmm. So just do it once, kind of like the Colby, same thing, and, and stick with that. And that's what you mean by reliable is that nothing really changes when you take it again later. Yeah. And that's what I like. Weird anomaly. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I like about the Colby and Clifton strengths is it's basically, it's almost as if this is what you're born with and this is how you are. And let's use your natural strengths. Cool. All right. So then that so goes into the four domains. Yeah, so let me just in terms of what you asked what a theme is. So let's just pick one, for example, Achiever, the first one. So Achiever has a whole bunch of components to it is what you want to think, a whole bunch of dimensions to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a stamina, working hard, being very goal driven, um, having lots of energy to to uh, drive and achieve things. Uh, checking things off your list energizes you getting things done. It's very productive, uh, getting, you know, uh, executing strength. 
So I'll jump into the four domains. So that is the first domain is the executing strengths. The, these are the one on your profile. It's the purple color. So if you've right. done it, yep. you'll see the purple color. So these are the people who really work hard at, the hardest in terms of actually getting things done. And if you want something, you know, responsibility is another one. And that's one of my top five. So if you want something done, you give it to an achiever, you give it to someone with responsibility, they're going to honor their commitment. If they said they're going to do something, they're going to follow through it, they're going to do it. So they work tirelessly to get stuff done. So that's the first domain. The second domain is the influencing domain. So these are things like competition, you've got self assurance, so that's an influencing thing, I've got maximum maximizer. Right. And so these are the themes that really push things out to a bigger audience. If you want to sell something, one of our best salespeople has all five top five influencing oh, wow. strengths, which is pretty cool. So when you want to have a bigger goal, you want to influence people, like people of competition will influence people to play at a higher level because they want to win. They want to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll influence people forward. Activators are going to push you to get in motion. Let's go. That's one of Dan Sullivan's and Bab Smith who owns Strategic Coach. Those are, so we can feel their influencing strengths coming in the building. Literally when they've been away, they're like going to activate some projects and get them moving. Uh, the third one is the relationship. So the activator, or sorry, the influencing are the orange ones on your on your report. Then we've got relationship building strengths. So these are the blue ones. These are the human component, the people who bring the people into the mix. Um, they make the connections between the people. Uh, they're focused. Um, I have three in my top five. Yeah, so. connectedness, developer, and relator. That's right. And you've got individualization, individualization. Yeah. in your top five. So uh, we're going to bring, you know, fit everybody into the bigger picture, consider the people component of things and be the glue that holds the team together. Yeah. You know, and then our, for, our, go ahead. Our, our person on our sort of our front stage uh, coordinator kind of person is she's got like tons. I think she's got all five relationship strengths. So you, I mean, you just feel like a warm hug when you walk mm -hmm. in her office. She just, she just connects with you and talks to you and finds out how you're doing. And it's just lovely. Yeah. And then like, for me, like the individualization, I'm really more about what's the quality of each person, what makes that person unique. And I look for that every time. And that's my number two. Exactly. And, and then it, uh, that's why I like what I'm doing with this kind of stuff is see how everyone is. So it's, it's really cool. And then on top of that, Andre, because I see people's uniqueness and unique strengths from a maximizer standpoint, I'm right. naturally drawn to people's strengths, but you're also able to customize and personalize how you're being, talking, thinking, whatever to that person. Oh, so because of that, because of that relationship individualization. Because of gotcha. your individualization strength. So right. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's hard to do a one size fits all approach for you. You'd be more, oh, well, I hate it. I hate, hate one it, size right? fits all. You. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's also a clue as what that irritates you. Um, and then the, the, fourth, the fourth domain is so true. The fourth domain is the strategic thinkers. So this is not my forte because I don't have any of these green ones until number 18 on my list. Uh, so these are the people who do the analyze. You've got analytical, so yeah, and you've got learners. Sense. So those are your, in your top five. So you're the people who do all the thinking, absorbing of information, helping make better decisions, seeing out into the future, the futuristics of the visionaries of the world. The ideation people like Dan Sullivan, the people who are really, if we put them in a room and let them think, they're going to create tons of value and help us really go forward and stretch our thinking to the future. Uh, so those are the four domains. And then within each one, you've got listed these different uh, 34 strengths. And the green one is what again? Would you call it? Which strategic domain? Thinking, strategic thinking. Strategic thinking. So the four domains are again? So executing is the doers influencing the influencers <laughs> the pushers uh relationship builders are the glue mm -hmm. and the strategic thinkers are the strategists and the people who really use their brains to come up with solutions and ideas right so like and each one so there's 34 in total so that's all kind of different types and we can go with all 34 here but uh, i think if we just concentrate on the ones that we have like your maximizer connectedness developer responsibility and relator I have learner, individualization, achiever, self-assurance, and analytical. Um, I know when I first took this assessment, it was, I read the theme. Okay, they kind of give you the science-y part. But what really hit me was the next part was, this is what it sounds like, and this is what a learner will do. And I was just like, 
oh, that's why I have so many hobbies. That's why I went so far in and stopped and went something else because I just need to learn. It's not the fact that I want to learn one thing over to its extent. It's the process of learning. And to me, that was a, a big, oh my God, this is how I do things. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That how you or, or the, the you're going to do things. So you're an eight fact finder from a Colby right. perspective. So you're going to research and naturally do things like uh, to get the specifics and the details. And you're going to correct me if I'm not accurate in how I'm saying something. <laughs> but then you're also going to apply that to the area of learning. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can be a two fact finder and have learner as your number one strength as well. So yeah. Before you take action, you're going to need a lot of specifics and details. If you already know that information, you're going to take action right away, Mm -hmm. right? But with learners, there's just this love of learning, love of knowing, building knowledge. I had one client, he called it the board of knowledge from Star Trek or something. So my neighbor, who's a university professor, she's got learner. Guess what? She's found a career naturally in a learning organization where it's all about people learning. Yeah. So um, people with learners, I, lo- I think it's a wicked strength because a lot of our technology people, our production graphics people have learned because the technology is always changing. So they love the fact that there's a new software to learn or a new program to learn. They love it. They soak mm-hmm. it up. Whereas I don't, as my maximizer may want me to learn something to be better at something. And I may kind of be interested in it, but I don't have that same, I don't want to go to the library or learn 400 different courses. Right. Yeah. You're going to learn yeah. enough to maximize someone else's strength, not necessarily go for like, for me, it's the process of learning. It's not yeah. necessarily the topic. Like, like it's, I remember to this day is if you haven't learned in a while, you're going to take a pottery class yeah. just to learn. So. Exactly. And that's something that if you're looking, you know, what's the purpose of this whole report? It's like, well, how should I be spending? Should I be spending? How, what's the best way for me to be spending my time? Well, I would definitely allocate some of your time to learning and make yeah. sure you've got that carved out and give yourself that opportunity because that will help you be at your best. Well, and that's what I found with COVID being shut down, locked down was I wasn't able to work on projects or certain things. And I just never, I wasn't learning anything anymore. Now I yeah. just start to do that more. So if you're frustrated, this is a good place to look too, right? Yes. What am I not doing? That's actually part of my top five strengths. And, and it also helps you figure out how do I want to help other people? Well, I guess what, by you doing this podcast, Andre, you're helping educate and helping other people learn so much about the perspective of an ADHD entrepreneur and how your brain works and how to best yeah. work with you and how to understand well, I bring in you on so I can learn more about Clifton exactly, right? so, so that win. the person, the listener can get more unique information for that individualization, individualization, individualization yep. side. And every learner learns in different ways. So you might yes. learn through talking and through mm-hmm. speaking to people and other people are going to go to the library and read books or, you know, podcasts yep. or, or listen to audio books or whatever it is. But like one past guest said, Don Bart is learn how you learn. Exactly. For success. And then do that because everyone's is different. Don't worry about how everyone else does it. You mm-hmm. may pick up some tips that might work for you, but you may go, oh, that doesn't work for me. So I've got this report in my hand. I've read all this stuff, okay? What do I do with that? Why is this, this more important? I, I find this is a more important tool than a lot of the other uh, affective assessments out there that just kind of gives you a glossy overcoat. But to me, these are actionable. What can I do with this? Yeah, it is really, we were talking about this before, it's so practical. So, I mean, in the report itself, they give you a lot of coaching, a lot of um, ways to make sure that you're taking action to realize your potential. I mean, if you're in a, if you're an entrepreneur, then really what you want to do is organize your time and activities around doing your top five strengths. So that's how you're going to create the most value in the marketplace. That's how you're going to create the biggest results. That's how you're going to go 10x. It's how you're going to uh, make the biggest difference, how you're going to have the most fun, how you're going to improve everything around you is by mm-hmm. focusing on these top five. You know, Donald Clifton was all about focusing on your individual uniqueness so that you could achieve and make the biggest difference. So really, it becomes a template for how you're doing, uh, how you're spending your time. Right. Not only me as an individual, but a team. Yeah. That's the key, right? Like I've got (laughs) my, with my companies, I have, everyone knows their Colby, everyone knows their strength finders. And what I kind of do is now I know how to manage you or communicate to you with the Colby, but now I know how and what to delegate to you with the strengths finders. It's kind of what I've been using. 
yeah, you, you, you pointed out the hugest point. So it's one thing to understand ourselves and increase our awareness and be more conscious and focus our own time. And, and that also then leads to, well, what do I want to delegate? And what do I want to release to the other people on my team and have them take over for me? And so the more you understand how, and again, your, unique, your individualization is going to want to understand the unique nuances and talents of your team, because then you're going to be able to customize basically how yeah. you're going to be with them and what you're going to give them and what you're going to delegate to them, because then it's going to be, you're not going to be riding the horse in the wrong direction. You're going to be riding the horse in the direction it's already going, because that person's going to take that delegation and run with it. They're not going to be like, oh, great, Andre asked me to do this thing. They're going to be, oh, good. Oh, yay. Here, let me take that. Let me take that and let me take it and make it even better than you could have ever imagined. Whereas if someone because that's what's you, right with that person. Yeah, that's what fits for them. Right. So it's all about right fit and matching up the mm -hmm. activities with someone's talents as much as you can. Obviously, there's stuff that has to get done and everybody rolls up their sleeves and has fun, you know, pulling off a late nighter or whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. But most of the time you want to work towards people doing more and more of their top strengths. Well, you, I got an example, result. like my engineer man, who's my engineer manager now, <clears throat> one of his top strengths is harmony. Just make sure everything's in harmony and harmonious. And I remember being at a, at a client's place and I was ready to fire that client. I was done. I, I was wits in and I just said, you know, wait, hold on. I'm going to bring him into the meeting now who has harmony. <clears throat> and they're now one of our better clients because I just delegated to him. That client is his. He can find the harmony. So that's, you know, if you know each other's strengths like that, it helps. And also coaching people like responsibility i think if correct me if i'm wrong responsibility is if i make a commitment to that i am personally responsible i'm never going to give it up it's mine to do because i said so is that correct well yeah are you talking about a like a job responsibility no no the responsibility theme yes so if i so i have responsibility in my top five which for those of us out there who have this it can feel like a little bit of a heavy one a weighty one and we have to learn how to manage it as with all of the 30 because you overcommit. well we can overcommit, but we also so someone will mention something and i immediately almost think it's my responsibility to do right. it and yeah. it's not so i have to be very discerning about what i i mean i have other exactly that, lead that kind of yeah. lead to that same direction so um, but also I want to work with other people who are responsible, like almost all of our accounting team have responsibility in their top five strengths. Mm -hmm. So Dan and Babs don't need to worry. Things are going to be handled. Well, they're going to be handled with integrity and they're going to be, you know, when people have said they're going to do something and deposit money in a certain way, they're going to have done it. You don't have to second guess. You don't have to, to question it. And so there is a really, um, there's a very solid feeling about someone's mm -hmm. responsibility when they make a commitment. Now, if I screw up and don't honor my commitment, I'm going to try to make up for it. And I'm going to go above and beyond to go, Oh my gosh, can I yeah. do this instead to make yeah. up for it? So we just, but we do have to be mindful uh, to not take on too much. Right. And that's kind of like what I was going at. Sometimes like, again, I got a couple of team members or responsibility. And then sometimes I got to say, no, you can't commit to that or take responsibility for it because, or, since you took responsibility, we got to figure a way for you to shift it so that you can let it go so we can get stuff going, right? Which like I great. always, you can provide that leadership and right. direction yeah. and to help that person let go. And when someone else tells me I can, I'm much more likely to be able to do it. Right. That's true. So like, that's and for me, I think this is where I actually caught the mantra of this. I think it was Clifton's strengths. Um, sorry, if I call it strengths finders, that's what it was called for a while. But this is where I kind of tagged the line of, your strengths can be your weaknesses. And it was a yeah. lot of this because there is one end of each spectrum. You know, you can be too harmonious. You can have not enough harmony. Like, so this is where, yes, there are strength, there are talent, but at the same time, if we use it correctly and efficiently, they're powerful. Yeah, I'll just mention Gallup's great definition of a weakness is a strength overused or misapplied. So if I overdo something, so an, an achiever overdone becomes a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a maximizer, Guilty. Like a maximizer applied to somebody who does not want to improve is a misapplication of my maximizer. And mm -hmm. I will be frustrated and that person will be annoyed. Yes. So, you know, 
anything you can be over analytical about things you can get caught up in the details and the analytics so that yeah. would be one of your dangers so anything it's again that fine balance of in the middle is the sweet spot and if you underuse it or overuse it or misapply it to the wrong audience someone who doesn't want what you have to offer oh but i want to help my niece she needs my help blah 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 well meanwhile your niece doesn't want your help you right know, often family members can be the tough yep. ones well even staff have had that Board staff, exactly. Yep. So you want to really be careful of how you're, and I have to take my maximizer shirt off when I get home. And I don't, my daughter doesn't always want to be maximized. Mm -hmm. you know? But, and, and if I get too perfectionistic, that's overused. So yeah. I need to sometimes accept the first 80% and let it go and realize where am I really going to apply my maximizer to its best ability, probably in my coaching, and then let it go around whatever else. Well, that's a good valid point because it's not only at work that these are valid, these are valid personally, emotionally, right across the board here. Yeah, we use them with every relationship and every yeah. situation that we're in when we're at the restaurant for dinner, when we're at our family gathering, when we're parents. We talked about parenting before too. So we, it is very good information to you to know about yourself. So you can manage yourself well in well, all those situations. It, it's one thing to know it, but I think you got to be aware of it so you can apply that knowledge so that it's effective, right? Exactly. As long as yeah, we're aware of it. Is one it's, thing, but actually applying that right. knowledge and it's the application of the knowledge to me is key. And it's continual reminders of, oops, yeah. okay, I went over, okay, I crossed the line on that one. It's Good also learning. being open to other people to point it out. Yes. Also, right? That helps. Yes. Be, Be coachable. coachable. Be open to learning, which is yeah. what a learner would say too. And what a maximizer would also say, because maximizers are all about improvement. The maximizers, we only want to focus on our strengths. So we actually need team members around us because we don't want to do the stuff that we're not good at naturally, which is probably right. why. We, we want to avoid it. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to do it. So Dan and Babs came up with the whole unique ability concept at Strategic Coach from that maximizer standpoint. And that's why we work with the people who are already at a high level and want to get to another level of excellence, which is what Don Clifton also had maximizer. And so he's all about maximizing people's strengths instead of fixing them and where they're broken and getting really strong, you know, weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on our strengths, because that, I mean, there's a whole other conversation there about incremental improvement and growth versus exponential. Because if you start out with something that you're already really good at, and then you put a lot of effort into it and invest your, you know, build knowledge around it, invest mm -hmm. your skills, invest your time in it, then you're going to get an exponential result. Yeah. I know for me, when I got this assessment done, I was able to, to correlate where the projects or the scenarios I enjoyed, I really enjoyed, I could tie it tied to one of my top fives and then went the stuff I did not enjoy I had stuff missing from those top fives yeah exactly can I go back to something else that we started talking yeah. about before around the definitions because they do make a distinction between talent and strength and when I was just oh, yeah, talking please. about the investment it made it it reminded me so this talent is sort of like this potential where this can be productively applied this potential natural way of thinking feeling or doing so a strength is when you take it and you apply it consistently and you get near perfect performance using it. So this means you've taken your talent and you've invested in it. So talent times investment equals strength. So everyone's kind of born with these potentials. So let's say you've got your top five and they're a potential. Mm -hmm. and they, could, they could turn into productive talent strengths. But, they, but if you haven't invested anything in them, they, they may not, or they may not show up in certain parts of your life. So the more, again, you will go back to that. If you start at a, your talent level as a one and you invest, you know, you do all these courses and you learn all about it and you build your strengths and you work like, you know, one out of five, and then you invest five out of five, you end up with five, one times five is five. But if you start and your talent is already natural for you, it's in your top five, you're at a five already and you multiply by five, five level investment, you're going to get 25. So there's that exponential, the difference between right. five and 25. And what was that formula again for the listeners? Uh, talent times investment equals strength. This is, strength is now happening consistently because you're doing it all the time, regularly. Uh, in most situations that you're in, you've, you've worked on it. Basically you've gone to the gym, you've lifted some weights, you know, you've, you've, Nurtured it. Oh, you fed I'm it, watered put it. my analytical mind here. So basically, the investment only amplifies the talent as long as you work with it. 
as long yes. as you build it, that's the only way it can become a strength. Yep. And from this formula, it's it's a never ending investment to build that strength higher that's right. and higher. And you, because it's so natural to you, you're going to find all those nuances of how you could be never ending about the improvements because mm -hmm. it, it fascinates you. It's yeah. a fascinating and motivating thing to continually explore and develop your own strengths. Now, if uh, I look at my bottom five, I'm not going to be fascinated and motivated about improving no. those bottom five. <laughs> so no. those bottom five, we call them non-talents. Basically mitigate them using your top five if you can, or delegate them to somebody else. Right. And yet at the same time, even though they're our top one or two, there's still a positive flip to that that allows us to have a, a strength or has another ability that's good also. Uh, that made no sense, but... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> I, know, I know there's something in there that's good. Yeah. I don't know what you mean, but yeah. It, 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 you know, one of the examples of um, my, my, uh, the teacher who led my training when I got Gallup certified, he had, he had input as his number one strength. It's a strategic mm -hmm. thinking strength where you gather, you kind of, it's a little bit like learner-ish, but it's someone who's super curious and they gather a whole bunch of information. They take a lot of input in could be, and they keep it in their backpack and they use it to be a resource for them. So he had all yeah. these amazing articles and books you should read that were way beyond the curriculum per se of Gallup. But, you know, he had these classes that he was teaching. And then he realized one time that he'd gone through three days of class and he hadn't connected with, he hadn't gotten some people in the class to even speak. I hadn't even heard a word of them. He's like, ooh, geez, that's probably not very good. So he, he decided to use his input. So he had includer as number 34. Mm -hmm. so that's where he wasn't including everybody in the group. And it's a relationship strength. So they weren't feeling very into the group, right? And part of the cohesive group. So he just started getting input. He said, okay, here's how I'm going to manage that. I'm going to get input from every single person in the group. By day one, I will have gotten some type of input. I'll ask them a question. I'll get them to contribute to the group and guess what they felt included so right. they felt included but from a way different angle from his strength of input and yeah. i think this is where it's very powerful it's just if you can just turn that table a little bit apply your strength to whatever task it, you can make it work for you in any way and that's what i really like about it i really like it using with the team uh, i get great responses from the team and uh, and what i really like about it is like you said uh uh, what was his name Clifton? What was his name Don, Don Clifton? Don, Don Clifton, yeah. Don Clifton. He wanted to work on what is right with people, right? Society really is there. We're going to tell you what's wrong with you, what you need to improve on. But what I liked about this is this is what's right about you. This is what you do well, and this is what we're going to try to work with you with, right? Weaknesses is a strength that's overdone, or misapplication of a strength. I yeah. like that. And then the formula: talent times investment equals strength. So it's a never-ending continual growth thing to maximize that strength it's always a continuous learning curve speaking from a learner <laughs> that's right that, that's a great recap thank you that's fantastic and that and that's what's going to lead to you being your highest and best most productive value creating self in mm -hmm. for everyone around you so there's a huge benefit to it and you'll you'll enjoy your life the most too because you're going to be doing this stuff that is fun for you it's interesting. And, and you'll look for that stuff now, which will make yeah. it more interesting. Yeah, your eyes are now going to see. Your eyes only see and your ears only hear mm -hmm. what your brain is looking for. So now all of a sudden you're going to look for opportunities to, I'm going to, I have developer in my top five. So I'm going to look for people's potential and I'm going to notice it. And I was like, oh, that's why I became a teacher mm -hmm. because kids have the most potential of anybody. Yeah. So that's partly why I, I didn't like teaching from a learning and an actual teaching perspective. I like nurturing people's growth. So that's why when I went from being a teacher to a coach at Strategic Coach, it fit. It was just a different audience, but I didn't, you know, I didn't necessarily, I was in a better system for me that also cultivated yeah. and developed me. Um, but what I, there was a common thread. Like if you look back through your life, you'll see common threads that, that fit into those top strengths. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you, Julia, for bringing insight to this. I think this is a very beneficial tool for all the listeners and their companies. Uh, and of course, you know all this stuff very well inside and out. Um, if you want more information about Clifton Strengths, you can go to gallup, G A L L U P dot com, or you can give me a call and I work with this stuff and Colby. And if you are interested in understanding yourself more and better, come on, give me a call. I'm be willing to help and understand that individual person you are, and we'll learn together.
Awesome. You're an amazing coach and such a knowledgeable human being around all of the strengths and talents of people and with your ADHD focus as well. So I would also highly recommend Andre. And if you do the assessment, do the 34, get the full 34 report. You can do your top five, but mm -hmm. why not? It's a few more bucks and you get the full list because we do use more than our top five. It's nice to see yeah, what that six, I agree. seven, eight, nine, ten are. Yeah. And then you also see what 34 is. So you know where to avoid mm. or where you're going to need some support. Yeah. And sometimes what I recommend is get the top five to start. And after a few months, go to understand the five. And it's because some people will take the 34 and get confused or not like what was on the bottom. But I think it all depends on the person. That's right. It says know. the analytical eight fact finder. Yeah. yeah. Do the top five and my <laughs> maximizers are like, just do the 34. So how about everybody just does what feels right to them? That's perfect. And that's all we say. If that's what you want. Do it. What's the <laughs> exactly. worst? Thing? So yeah. thanks again, Julia. I can't wait to have the next conversation with you. And thanks, thanks for Andre. listening. What a pleasure.